Hey, how are you hey. doing? How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good, good. Uh, last time we spoke, it was um, just after lockdowns and um, everyone was really feeling it. Wow. How are you now? Was. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Um, yeah, life has returned, I guess, ish to normal. Um, South by Southwest this week, which I'm looking forward to going, going to again. Um, in the yes, middle I of saw you recorded... there with your band, The Shevin. Yes, I remember you saying, yeah, and posting those cool photos, yeah. Thank you. Um, um, yeah, oh God, another, another lifetime ago, <laughs> it feels like sometimes. But um, yeah, I can't wait to get back, um, back there again this year and uh, uh, in the middle of finishing a new album, so I'm kind of zipping around between studio and home at the moment so fantastic tell us a little bit about the new album before i get on to this new single <laughs> um yeah the new album is uh so it, it came obviously i only released funland last february so it's pretty pretty quick turnaround but you know my plan originally was to just release singles for a little while and not worry about doing an album um but that you know i i very quickly discovered that i am <laughs> almost incapable of doing that and i have no choice but to write an album when i kind of sit down to to write it so so i did and um I oh wrote you an poor thing you poor thing so much talent you know <laughs> like... i just can't do it like it's like this song needs this song and this song needs this one and yeah can't just leave them on their own sort of thing. Um, so yeah, so I kind of sat down and, and wrote an album and started, started recording it. And then, um, and then essentially wrote a whole new album after that. So kind of scrapped what I started. And in the last couple of weeks, um, I've written something new, which I really love. So, so I've kind of dived into the studio to get it recorded as quickly as possible. And, um, should be done i guess by the end of april may i'm planning on having it finished half of it's already been mixed right now so um and have it out sort of end of summer this year fantastic because you do all the mixing and stuff don't you not the mixing um, um but yeah most of the other stuff yeah, yeah. yeah. well you are a multi-instrumentalist and self-taught are there any new uh, sounds we might hear on this new one? Uh, I've been playing the nylon acoustic a lot, you know. I don't know why. I can't remember why now. I just, I mean, I, I got a little nylon guitar, just a little cheap thing um, last year. And I just like how it sounds. I like how it sounds recorded. So a lot of what I've written was written on nylon string acoustic. So um, there's definitely a bunch of nylon string on there. I don't think I've recorded that on a record before. So nice. Yeah. Mm. I was yeah. hoping, do you play mandolin? I was just wondering actually. I do, yeah. I yeah. do play mandolin. There's a banjo there as well, but I've not fully figured that out yet. But <laughs> yeah, I've played, I've, I used to play mandolin live um, actually in the Shevin. I'd like a couple of songs where I would just strum away on mandolin for a few songs. Love it. As well as that, have you been writing songs for other artists? Hopefully some Australian ones so that you can tour? <laughs> Not so much. Yeah, I've kind of been, um, yeah, working a lot on a bunch of musicals and, uh, and throwing myself into finishing this new record. So not so much over mm -hmm. the last bits here and there, but, um, I do need to get down to Australia. I know I keep threatening that, but maybe this year we'll see. Fingers crossed if we can figure something out this year. Yeah, hope so. Hope so. Yeah, um, and now your latest is called True Love Forever. It's uh -huh. beautiful. I mean, we discussed Funland last time we spoke. And now tell us a little bit about True Love Forever. So True Love Forever, um, 
So let so last summer uh, we were workshopping a uh, theater piece that I've uh, created with a New York production company called Third Rail Projects, and um, it's kind of we it was inspired by my first solo record Love Kills, and it's kind of a immersive uh, sort of exploration of heartbreak and love and lust and and sort of everything in between and and so we started workshopping this piece in the summer last year we probably spent about six six months on and off over the last kind of year doing it and um obviously had to start to put a storyline together for the for the piece and um realized there was a lot of songs missing and true love forever was the song that i wrote to fit into this um piece and it's um basically the kind of the moment where um you know it's a couple fall in love and you know, they ask that question is this it have i figured it out is it is it true love forever so you know when i kind of sat down to write it i didn't overthink it i didn't kind of try to get too heavy or deep with it i just tried to kind of be sort of in that very split second sort of moment and that's uh yeah so that that's where the song came from it's beautiful and i really love the film clip too the video um and you shot that with um the cast yeah yeah in new york in the subway which i was half expecting to be an absolute disaster but uh somehow we managed to get it done without really any craziness i was you know when they when they came with the idea to do that i was like there's no way we're gonna how are we gonna film in the subway there's always something ridiculous going on as people will try and get in the shot but people behave they kind of stood out the way they like watch from the side and yeah that was good <laughs> <laughs> and i love your little hitchcock moment yeah i didn't want to be in it at all but they're like come on just go and sit in there i was like okay fine so i i crept in the end yeah like a creep no it's very cool very cool i was wondering about you know how you call it an immersive performance so uh what can people expect from a musical like that um it's kind of uh you know it's kind of like the you know it's it's hard to kind of explain it but it, you know it's a it's an immersive a piece of immersive theater you know first of all i guess and so you know the audience is very much the center of the performance and the the story um takes place around and you know using the audience's own personal experience is kind of the context for it and we do a lot of work to sort of trigger memories and things at the very you know in the early parts um and the songs are kind of an accompaniment to the whole thing um with a, a show in there at some point as well so it's kind of a cross between a, a concert and and immersive theater i guess counseling um, session Definitely therapeutic. Yeah. I mean, we, we did, you know, we did a very sort of short and stripped down version of what will be a part of it, I guess, last year. And, um, lots, yeah, lots of tears by the end. So it, it does its job, which I hope, you know, it's my hope for it is that people will, you know, I mean, everyone has a different experience when they go see a piece of theater or art, but, my hope is that it is kind of therapeutic and people kind of work, you know, whatever it is, um, out through the piece and find it healing by the time they get to the end of it. So, so I think last time we spoke, we spoke about how, you know, you do heal through music and you do, especially writing music for you, maybe. Oh yeah. Oh, always. Yeah. I mean, that's probably why I started writing music you know, as a kid. So, um, still does the same thing. Yeah. Still does that, <clears throat> whatever the magic it does 
where it kind of what's the best thing do you think about performing to a live audience uh i mean the connection right i guess the the fact that you can um write something in your bedroom or wherever sat on a couch or and then uh record it and then take it to a stage and connect with a room full of people it's it's cool magic it's good magic. How, does it, how do you feel when you um look out into the audience and they're actually singing your words because that might would be magical yeah that's the best it really is yeah it's always kind of been hard um yeah hard to kind of believe <laughs> in some ways mm -hmm. it's cool it's just a really it's just such a gift to be able to do it and to be able to, uh, you know, do it well enough for other people to feel like they, they want to learn it and sing the songs. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's... well, you have a gift, you do. And um, a lot of people thank you for the music that you've made. Uh, now, I don't really like titles and stuff, but I, I do like these two descriptions of you. Uh, Shoegaze Elvis Presley and Dystopian Roy Orbison. Me too. Oh, Dystopian Roy Orbison. That's a good one. I don't know why that one. <laughs> oh, yeah, I like it. Dy Dystopian Roy Orbison. I wonder why Dystopian, not just Roy Orbison. Um, yeah, very cool. And Shoegaze Elvis. I mean, cannot argue with either of those two. Yeah. yeah. They are both good for my ego. That's for sure. <laughs> Do you goes. have people coming up to you and saying you've influenced them? Yeah. Yeah. Which is, you know, humbling. Very cool. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, that's all you ever hope, right? When you write a piece of music is that it connects or any art, right? That, you, you know, it connects to people and they get something of value from it that and, uh, makes everything a little easier, a little better, make a little more sense, you know. Well, I'm loving it. I love the fact that Love Kills will come out as well with the musical that you're doing. Because yeah. um, I hate putting things back into the shelves, you know, when a new record comes out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, part of my thinking um, with releasing so much music um, in a short space of time and, you know, even after this next, uh record i already already have another one to record to come like not long after that and i think you know part of it is um that yeah the physical sort of putting a, a record on the shelf is one thing but everything exists online now and, and it's almost like um discovery kind of feeds backwards for people now so at whatever point new discovery is made then all of a sudden Love Kills is new to people or Funland is new to people. And, and um, yeah, I like, I like that kind of building on top of the last thing rather than having them as, you know, separate and spaced out um, pieces of art or records or, you know, whatever. So yeah, and for Love Kills, it's gonna be cool to have, uh, you know, for it to have another minute again. Um, because it was always a concept album in the first place. I, one of my first thoughts was to have, you know, try and create a piece of theatre from it um, when I'd finished it. And obviously then time moves past, a plague comes along and <laughs> a million other things. So um, I'm happy that we've been able to kind of revisit that idea and, and make it. So, yeah. That's great. It's fun. I can't wait to get it on stage. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. I think I'll have to come to New York for that one. Bring it down. Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I mean, we're, you know, the 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 plan is that we build it in a way that it can exist um, on the road as well. So it would be, it'd be, the hope is to tour it at some point as a show, which would be cool. No, that's great. And um, I mean, I love, you know, as you said earlier about things online, because I think um, on Spotify, I think 
do you want to dance is probably my fault that it's up there because I just keep putting <laughs> it on. I love, I still love it. Thank you. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm happy to see it just churning away out there. That's the, <laughs> and still finding people. I mean, it's only, you know, barely a year old, so it is still a new song in, uh, in you know, time wise, but the world moves quicker now, right? So, yeah, that's right. That. Yeah. And last time we spoke, I did end with two questions again. I'm going to ask you the same ones and then I'll check back and let you know what you said on the other one. Um, how would you describe, now it's still about love, so it might be a similar answer, but how would you describe this single um, in food form? In food, uh, true love forever in food. Yeah. Uh, well, um, uh, a, an apple, I guess, a forbidden fruit, right? Has to be an apple. An apple. Um, in apple. Funland, you described as a juicy orange. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah, that makes sense. An orange. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Um, and lastly, our magazine is What's My Scene. What is your scene? Uh, what is my scene? Uh, love. Love is my scene. Beautiful. <laughs> I'll tell you what you said last time. <laughs> yeah, probably less. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was really lovely, but you were um, a bit too modest in the last one. It was like throwing myself in amongst creative people and hoping a bit of it rubs off on me is my scene. Oh, that's a nice one as well. It is a nice one. Yeah. yeah. But I like love better. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. And I hope next time I see you, it is in Melbourne or at a festival somewhere. Yes, me too. I look forward to it.